Great morning. You're listening to the podcast, She Who Believes, and I am your host, Vivian Bell, and I am indeed She Who Believes. So it's Wednesday morning, June 7th, and um, I am excited, (laughs) excited to be with you guys. I don't know that I'll ever stop saying that because I don't know. I just get excited about God. I get excited about the, how, having faith in God, not because it's something that I can do on my own because he has given every man a measure of faith, but because he is a God that is worthy of our faith, of trusting him, of believing him. So he gave us what we needed to believe in him. I um, mean, he gave again, each man a measure of faith to use in the earth to produce the things he's given to us. But then he's also given us reason to be faithful. And that alone <laughs> is a beautiful thing. It's an amazing thing. Um, I've been thinking lately about faithful things in our lives, right? Things that are faithful, people who are faithful, but above all things, God is faithful. And, um, that just excites me. Um, it excites me. It excites me. It excites me. So I will do my best to not jump right in because I do want to always honor those who are, who are listening, who are, uh, joining the podcast, who are following the blog. Um, we just say thank you. Thank you for um, being here. Not for us, right? Um, So I never want it to be misunderstood or felt like it's a a selfish type thing or a thing where I'm like, you know, it's about me. But um, I do know that God calls us to speak to a certain group of people. But I want to say thank you for, for being believers in God, believers in his word, being a person who desires to believe God. Because I mean, think about it. The title of the podcast is actually She Who Believes, right? So um, here we are um, encouraging you to believe God. And that is the most amazing, most beautiful thing because it says without faith, it is impossible to please God. And so belief, having belief in God is having faith and it motivates us to live by faith and it affects every decision we make and all of the things that we do in life, literally the things that we do both in flesh and in spirit. So Um, Anyways, we're going to do a shout out today. Um, Just thanking everyone again. We're excited because this week, uh, followers of the blog um, have showed up from different areas of the world. And so um, we want to shout out Singapore, the U.S., of course, India, Russia, Belgium, Finland, China, France, Hong Kong, Iran, Lithuania, and Norway. Now for the podcast, we've got um, consistent areas of listening, which is um, the U.S., Germany, U.K., and India. And I want to say all the other locations that I listed for the blog are also uh, podcast listeners because for some reason I've been in this place of just posting the podcast to the blog. I don't know what's happening with that, but I'm trusting the Lord because as I told you guys, I won't post anything, do anything, even record this podcast without a word from him. Even though sometimes coming in, I ain't really sure about the word or what the message is he's trying to get across. Sometimes not until I'm actually sitting here in the office with these earbuds in and uh, speaking what he's directed me to do. Sometimes in that very, in this very mo- morning, in the moment, and sometimes it's a day, a couple days before. He just, I'm just rolling with him. So I thank y'all for rolling with me. So um, again, um, for the podcast, it's the U.S., Germany, United Kingdom, and India. Now, in the U.S., we've got the state of Florida. Again, your girl's hometown, uh, her, her home state. We've got Washington, Virginia, Ohio, California, Texas, Georgia, North Carolina, Oregon, Pennsylvania, New York, Michigan, Arkansas, Illinois, Tennessee, New Jersey, and Missouri. And so this week, I am going to shout out the cities within the state of Florida that are in our listening group from which our listeners come in Texas. And so our our main, our largest, uh, our city with the largest listeners at 36% of the listeners um, coming from Dallas. Then there's Leander, Irving, Mesquite, Conroe, Springtown, College Station, Georgetown, Arlington, Houston, Richardson, Paris, Allen, Harlingen, Grand Prairie, Bulverde, Austin, Lufkin, Lubbock, Temple, and Round Rock. So thank you guys again for listening in and supporting the podcast. So 
Um, uh, this month is the month of June. And in the month of June, there is a, a national holiday, and which actually falls on the 19th this year. And that holiday is Father's Day. And so, um, I have, I, I, I really, I will just let God tie it all together. Because if I tried to explain to you what's happening in my spirit, in my mind, and what God is doing, I will fail at that. So I'm going to share the words that he's put in my heart and in my spirit, the scriptures he's given me, and I'm going to let him tie that together for you all uh, today. So, um, Father's Day, right? So I think one of the most under-celebrated holidays is Father's Day. And um, I don't just say that because I'm a daddy's girl or I grew up a daddy's girl. Um, I say that because... I have an even greater revelation this year of how the effects of earthly fatherhood often damages our view of God. Um, But I want to just talk to you about the character of our father, our heavenly father, and which I, I realize now actually will relate to some of our earthly fathers Sometimes we don't understand God. I'm going to just say it. Um, We just don't understand God. And just like we don't always understand our earthly fathers and why they do or don't do the things that they do, right? One of the things that um, often is misunderstood about God, our father is his silence. Um, So I've been in this situation and I've been um, vague about it. And I'm going to stay vague about it because, well that ain't y'all's business Uh, but honestly um sometimes uh things are just meant to stay vague we are not god doesn't give us a release to speak free to speak freely on particular things and sometimes he never gives us a release or later in a later season sometimes decades later god releases us to speak about something that took place in our lives but in this season of my life um i am learning to trust the silence of god when it seems like he's saying nothing and when he's telling me to say nothing. Um, sometimes there are times in our lives where we are mistreated. We are um, not fairly handled um, in, in in different areas of our lives. And God tells us to stay silent. And it seems strange because you're like, this isn't fair. I know you're a good God. I know that you made me promises. I know that there are things that um you've guaranteed to me i know that there are things that i know you see because you are my god and you are my father and you are everywhere all the time present in every situation with me walking me through the valley of the shadows of death um just you're with me so why am i being quiet do you not see the things that are happening And I'm learning even more so in this season, even as I'm talking about it, being able to reflect back over times where literally I was mishandled, mistreated. It was blatant. It was apparent. And God still said, be quiet. But here I am later, uh, years later, um, and on particular situations that I had totally forgotten about until I started talking about it, talking about or leading into what the Lord's told me to talk about this morning that I I even remembered those times and remember how I felt in those times because even though there was this hurt and this pain and this unfairness there was also this great peace of God that that let me know hey it's okay I got you yep I see it yep it's not fair but trust me and be quiet because the silence later brought elevation the silence later brought an awareness of integrity the silence later brought an awareness of the gift of God within me. Um, the gifts that God gives us is not just for us. It's really not about us. It's about those we're called to. It's about those who are family members and people who he's called us to uh, be a light to in the earth. So people around you see how you respond to things. They see the things that are happening to you. And then if we trust God in the moments where he tells us to be quiet, they do the, they see the ultimate thing and that's God in us and through us. Not for our glory, but for his. And that's why sometimes we can't see or understand because 
the focus needs to remain on God. It needs to remain about his glory and about his purpose and about his will. So uh, God has led me to the book of Joshua. He did. He's, he's led me to the book of Joshua. And many of my most favorite scriptures, the ones that have brought me peace, the ones that have been the staples in my home has come from the book of Joshua. But um, he led me there. And uh, I don't know, he's just really giving me this revelation of the power of his silence. Sometimes we fear God's silence, right? So um, sometimes in business, God, it will seem like God is quiet. So we, we, we equate silence to stillness, which is not at all accurate. Being silent does not mean God is not moving. Does not mean that God does not have a plan. Does not mean that God is not working. Does not mean that God did not hear you. Did not mean that God did not move at your declaration of truth and power in your life. When you felt that, hey, declare this over your life and you felt that unction from the Lord. And he told you to do a thing and uh, to declare a thing. And then it seems like there is no movement. Don't equate his silence for stillness. Because he's moving. There's a space in the Bible between the Old and the New Testament where there were hundreds of years where God said nothing to his people. But the plan of Jesus Christ was always in motion. Always in motion. God was moving. So here in the book of Joshua... He told them, hey, it's time. I will give you, I've given you this land. Like, it's time for you to go possess it. But there was a point where he had to send in spies. Spies don't move loudly. That's why they're called spies. Usually, you don't even know when a spy is present. That's usually the power of a spy, but also the danger to the one that they are in opposition of or the one that they're spying on because they move so stealthily that you don't perceive them moving. We don't always perceive God moving in the silence. But as one most amazing uh, minister of the gospel has stated, Dr. Darius Daniels, even when God is silent, that's intentional. So he has some send-in spies, and um, the spies go in to Rahab's house. A harlot, a prostitute, a hidden place, because they were not going to uh, expect spies to come into a harlot's home. Eventually, they heard about it, but there she hid them. They took her at her word. Someone who uh, operates in a place of where deception takes place, maybe in her home. Deception of sometimes, I'm sure men came in and lied about who they were. Deception in that men were there, but they may have, they were married men and men who should not have been there. Um, but they trusted, they trusted this prostitute. And so, um, so, hey, thank you, Jesus. Back to the place of integrity and trust and God's integrity. What kind of integrity did a prostitute have? When I ask that, most people might think none, but she had great integrity to keep secret um, the lies and the life and the secret lives of men. Even though I'm sure people saw men pass in and out of her home because her house was on the wall of Jericho. But she had integrity that she did not apparently blackmail anyone or any of those things. And you think like, how can you get all of that from the scripture that give you those details? But they trusted her. These men who were soldiers who came and said, give us these spies, took this woman at her word when she told them they're not here. Whose secrets did she keep, right? I don't know, but that just, I don't know, that revelation just fell in my spirit. But So, not only did she keep her word, uh, to others like and I and thank you Lord God because she was not only trustworthy to me and she was trustworthy to God because he allowed his men to go there and allow his men to trust her to say let us down on this cord and lead this cord in your window and we'll honor if you keep your part we'll honor our part and like they made a covenant with the prostitute there was some integrity within her so I'm going to show you how I know there was also integrity within her Lord I thank you 
is that she is a part of the lineage of Jesus Christ. God knew her profession, but he didn't let that define her in his eyes. There's some things that you've done in this life that I want you to know today. Your father wants you to know today that it doesn't change how he sees you in his eyes. Mm. God, you're doing a thing today. We bless you. So, as we carry on to uh, other chapters in the in the Bible in, in Joshua, so we are in. I'm 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 now um, moving into uh, chapter six and seven in my own personal reading, but I want to share with you guys about how um, the walls of Jericho fell down. God literally told them to march around the city seven days six of those days he told them to do so in silence in literal silence to be quiet to say nothing but to march around the city he gave them the plan he told well he gave their leader the plan and he told him that on the seventh day You're going to march around seven times. The first six times still in silence. And the seventh time around when you hear the leaders, the priests blow their horns. Then the people are to scream in a large shout and the walls will come tumbling down. Now, these people could have um, thought, this is crazy. This is ludicrous why are we being quiet you giving us this land give it to us like I'm sure that there were those that might have had certain thoughts about it but the reality is is that they obeyed God even when they did not understand when he was telling them to be quiet there may be a situation in your life where you feel like Lord I want you to do something I'm trusting you. I'm believing in you to do a particular thing, to take care of a thing. But then you get this overwhelming sense of silence. Well, I want to encourage you today to trust God even in his silence and when he is instructing you to be quiet. Because I promise you everything our father does is completely intentional. And at some point, you will shout, and the walls will come tumbling down. It might be walls within your marriage. It might be walls for your children. It might be walls in your finances and your business and um, circumstances in your life. It might be walls in your health. But trust God and bless his name. Believe him. Honor him with your obedience in the silence. And watch God bring you victory. Well, this has been the word that I have been given, so I am finished. (laughs) But I want to say thank you to you guys again for just tuning in, for entrusting me to share with you the word that God gives and to encourage you to stretch your faith, to keep believing God. Continue to put your name in the place of the word she in our staple scripture, Luke 1 and verse 45. Put your name in there. Blessed is Vivian. Blessed is Verna, blessed is Charlotte, blessed is Georgia, blessed is Samantha, (laughs) blessed, blessed, blessed is she who believes. Trust God, believe God, and walk by faith and not by sight. I'll see you guys back here next Wednesday. God bless you.